The fourth generation Mercedes A-Class offers an even stronger proposition to buyers in the premium compact hatch segment. If you define luxury in terms of technology, you're going to like it a lot. Mercedes-Benz is a company often portrayed as being deeply conservative, although in fact, no other manufacturer has such a record of innovation. Today, the brand is bolder, more forward-thinking, and younger in feel, attributes very much in evidence in this fourth-generation version of its smallest A-Class model. Now, this car is now pitched even more directly against sporty, premium, compact family hatches like Audi's A3 and BMW's 1 Series, thanks to key new driving features, sharper looks, and extra media connectivity. Plus, this car sets a fresh standard in terms of interior design. Potentially, it's a big step forward. As before, we're told to regard this A-Class as what the market calls a compact premium family hatchback. In other words, a Focus or Astra-sized car with superior quality and a bit of extra badge equity. It's the kind of very profitable product that all the mainstream makers wish they could sell, but which is primarily defined by this car and its two closest competitors, the Audi A3 and the BMW 1 Series. Uh, the frumpy, tall-sided first and second generation W168 and W169 Series A class models were paragons of design and space efficiency, but they didn't really threaten those two rivals in any meaningful way. This car's Mark III model W176 series predecessor though, uh, which switched to more of a conventional sporty hatchback format, very definitely did. Over 60% of its sales were to people who'd never bought a Mercedes before, and it lowered the average age of an A-class buyer by more than a decade. Uh, there were certainly things to work on though. The cabin still wasn't quite as spacious or well-built as that of a rival Audi A3. And in their efforts to make the Mark III A-Class sporty and dynamic like the BMW 1 Series, uh, the development team made its suspension fidgety and over stiff. And that's why so much effort and investment went into this fourth generation model, which according to its maker, completely refines modern luxury in the compact class. And that's quite a claim. The brand thinks that this modern luxury is now partly defined by technology, so that gets a key focus thanks to the introduction of a completely new MBUX, Mercedes-Benz User Experience Infotainment Setup, and that is built into sophisticated cabin design which instantly makes rivals look dated. There's an all new range of efficient petrol and diesel engines too. All of it sat on a fresh MFA2 platform, which will underpin a whole future generation of compact Mercedes models. Now this makes possible the 30 millimeter wheelbase increase, which is needed to release extra cabin and luggage space. Plus there's autonomous driving tech, a new era of headlamp technology, and another step forward in terms of safety provision. This then is the compact hatch that Audi and BMW feared Mercedes might build, but both of them will be developing products to beat it. What kind of benchmark then will this A-Class set for them to aspire to? Let's find out. It seems a long time ago that the Mercedes A-Class was something of an also ran in the sporty premium compact hatchback segment. Actually though, it's only been since the introduction of the third generation uh, W176 series design in 2013 that this model line has been in any way sporty. Now that car surprised us by feeling sharp and taut, but the downside was suspension that felt rather overly firm and fidgety. And that's a problem that Mercedes never properly solved throughout the Mark III version's production run. As you'd expect, given the fresh perspective applied to this replacement car, the ride quality here is better, uh, if very far from being exemplary. Uh, Mercedes could have done more had it not followed the regrettable segment trend of limiting properly sophisticated multi-link rear suspension to the priciest and most powerful models in the range. As it is, all mainstream A-classes have to make do with an ordinary torsion beam rear suspension arrangement, and that doesn't seem very premium when some similarly sized volume brand hatches in this sector, uh, let's say for example a Kia Seed costing about 30% less feature multi-link rear suspension as standard on all variants. 
Still, the torsion beam package has been refined as much as the Mercedes development team could manage. Uh, the engine is helped, no doubt, by the slightly lengthier and more sophisticated MFA2 chassis that this fourth generation A-Class now sits on. Now, that is the platform that the brand plans to use for all its compact front-wheel driven designs going forward, and it plays its part in allowing this model's ride quality to be a pretty good match for its more direct Audi and BMW rivals. There are plenty of less poshly badged family hatches we could name though uh, that cosset you more completely over rough surfaces. To be fair, not many of them are as good through the turns as this Mercedes though. Um, we don't think the direct steer steering system is quite as fearsome as it was before, but it does still enable you to place the car where you'd want through the curves and to really enjoy this A-Class if you're a keen driver. Body roll is kept well in check and you're favoured with prodigious grip, which is impressively untroubled by mid-corner bumps. Uh, so the signs are good for the A35 and A45 Mercedes AMG Super Hatch models, which will take on the halo responsibilities at the head of the range. Our focus today though is on the mainstream variants, most of which get engines developed by Mercedes in conjunction with its European alliance partner Renault. As before, there's a 1.5 litre diesel for the popular A180D derivative, and that offers 116 horsepower and performance stats that see 62 miles an hour uh, from rest dispatched in 10.5 seconds on the way to 126 miles an hour. Your alternative to that model lies with a couple of 1.3 litre petrol units, either the 136 HP engine fitted the base A180, for which the figures are 9.2 seconds and 134 miles an hour, or more probably uh, the variant that we've decided to try today, the 163 horsepower A200, which marginally improves those figures to 8.2 seconds and 140 miles an hour. Now this petrol engine isn't in itself especially refined, but everything surrounding it seems to have been very thoroughly developed indeed when it comes to noise suppression. Uh, the result is that this Mercedes is a really impressively quiet cruiser and it's far more suited to longer highway trips than you expect a car of this size to be. You can see why so many A-Class sales are made to customers downgrading from larger luxury cars, which also might explain why such a high proportion of models sold here are automatics, in this case an improved smooth shifting 7G DCT automatic transmission which slightly enhances acceleration. Now you have to have that gearbox in the Mercedes developed uh, 2 litre petrol engine used in their 224 HP A250 variant which does get multi-link rear suspension and which delivers a uh, mildly hot hatch style confection which is capable of getting you to 62 in 6.2 seconds en route to a maximum of 155 miles an hour. This A-Class, like the previous generation model, gets the Mercedes Dynamic Select driving mode system, although it's standard across the range this time. Um, as usual, this is one of those setups which will appropriately tweak the steering feel, uh, the throttle response, and on the automatic models, the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive via three main options, comfort, eco, and sport. Now, unfortunately, Dynamic Select doesn't give you the kind of um, set and forget auto setting that you'll get with a rival Audi A3s. Otherwise, comparable drive select package but you do get to play with an almost infinitely configurable individual mode which allows you to alter your own parameters. To suit the mood of the moment, this fourth generation gets a degree of autonomous driving technology, although only if you pay quite a lot extra for the active distance assist Distronic system, which is designed to operate on a dual carriageway and works with the Mercedes active steering assist setup. Uh, expect take up on this option to be quite low. A-class owners like to drive themselves, and in this fourth generation model, they'll find a willing premium partner. Innovation does create interest, but it doesn't necessarily sell cars. Now, the original first and second generation Mercedes A-Class models, with their tall-sided stance and clever sandwich construction floor, were forward-thinking and superbly space-efficient. But Mercedes' smallest model didn't really begin to sell until the company reverted to copying what its competitors were doing. Uh, now, that happened with the uh, third generation W176 series model of 2013, which got a conventional hatch shape with some sporty cues and a few premium touches. And that's an approach continued but evolved by this Mark IV W177 series design. 
In analysing the Starling, let's start in profile so we can see the way that this model is visually extended by its longer wheelbase and by this sharp character line that runs from uh, nose to tail just below the glass house. Now the wing mirrors are now mounted midway along it rather than being integrated into the windscreen pillar and the bonnet slopes down more heavily than it did with the previous car and that emphasises what Mercedes hopes is a more dynamic upright front end. Now this sweeping, uh, rather unsubtle boomerang shaped lower curving crease that characterised the lower flanks of the previous model is replaced by this much more restrained shaping line. Uh, it flows between wheel arches which are now much larger so as to house the bigger wheels that are very much in vogue right now. Uh, the rim sizes available range from 16 to 19 inches. We've got the 18 inches here. And at the front, well, we just talked about the lower bonnet, which flows into these narrower, meaner headlamps with torch-like LED daytime running light strips. Full LED beams are standard, provided you avoid entry-level trim, or you can specify multi-beam LED headlamps, which uh, continually adapt themselves to road conditions and other motorists. Other stylistic elements of the nose section depend a great deal on the trim level you specified. Now, ideally, you would want a top AMG line spec variant like this one, which features these twin finned lower corner outlets and a diamond style radiator grille finished with these glistening chrome pins. It all creates a level of overtaking presence which is a long way from the kind of mundane state that you make at the wheel of say a Focus or an Astra. Now at the rear, this A-Class now has a wider stance due to its more heavily waisted look, uh, these broader two-piece LED tail lamps and the wider spacing of these slim rear reflectors which are integrated dual-like into the smarter modular two-section bumper. None of it really adds up to much with base SE trim which looks disappointingly derivative but the lower diffuser section which is added further up the range makes quite a difference especially when it's combined with this fluted bumper which comes as part of the AMG line spec body styling kit. Of course as usual what's more important is the stuff you can't see. Uh, in this case an all new MFA2 compact car platform that will be used in various of Mercedes smaller models including next generation versions of the B-Class MP and the GLA SUV. The real story here though is what lies within. The interior of this car, we're told, resets the standard when it comes to the kind of thing a premium compact hatch can deliver. So let's have a look. And sure enough, it'll be like nothing you've ever previously sat in when it comes to a car of this class. In fact, we're tempted to say it's like nothing we've ever previously sat in full stop. Uh, you'll need to like extrovert silver turbine style air vents because there are no fewer than five of those festooning this uh, really uniquely designed avant-garde dash. But the key change is the lack of the kind of cowled instrument binnacle that almost every other car on the market has to have. As a result, the wing-shaped main body that dashboard extends from one side of the cabin to the other with no visual discontinuity. Now instead, two elongated square colour TFT screens are provided, one for the centre dash infotainment system and the other for the dials that you view through the sophisticated three-spoke multifunction steering wheel. Now these monitors are both seven inches in size as standard, but to get the full effect of the changes made here, you'll need to pay more. Uh, an executive pack upgrades a central infotainment display screen size to 10.25 inches, but you'd ideally want to stretch to the premium pack that'll do the same for the instrument binnacle monitor. Uh, with two larger screens in place as here you really get the full intended widescreen effect. Now you can control quite a few of the functions offered by this double screen arrangement via these neat little steering wheel touch pads. Now using these uh, you can customise the instrument display ahead of you via three settings, normal classic, a yellow themed sport layout and a darker minimalistic understated setup. Either way, in between the virtual dials, you can tailor the centre part of the screen to view driving assistance, phone, navigation, uh, trip computer, radio or media information. There are some really sophisticated graphics in play here and you really get to see what the Mercedes designers can do with them on this centre dash infotainment monitor. Now this is your portal for viewing what's supposed to be one of this car's technological highlights, its new MBUX, Mercedes-Benz User Experience Multimedia System and that comes as standard regardless of screen size. Now this is supposed to take in-car connectivity to a new level and that's supposed slightly undermined by the setup's failure to 
include standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Still, you do get Bluetooth, a DAB tuner, voice activation and hard disk sat-nav too as part of a package which is here upgraded to advanced navigation status with what Mercedes calls augmented reality technology. Now this is effectively a live camera feed of the road ahead overlaid with house numbers, road names, uh, direction arrows and other bits of uh, useful information which will help you to find your way. Now some aspects of the MBUX setup we really like. The touchpad down here at the base of the center stack that you can use to control it is superb with easy functionality, helped by these surrounding shortcut buttons for navigation, radio, uh, phone and vehicle features. Note to Lexus, if you wanna give customers touchpad controllers, this is how you do it. What's not quite so good is the system's so-called Hey Mercedes voice activated functionality. Uh, the brand name uh, designates the greeting which you'll need to address the screen in order to get uh, the speech recognition setup to work. Uh, sometimes you'll think it's brilliant, but all too often, if it responds at all, it'll either trip up over similar words, it doesn't appear to know the difference between new and nude, for example, or it will chime in when you don't want it to, when you're mentioning the word Mercedes in casual conversation, for example. Now, one tester uh, tells a story of finally in frustration, hurling an expletive at the MBUX setup, which it heard as fan off and then shut down the ventilation system. Enough on connectivity. Uh, what else do you need to know about this cabin? Well, the material quality of some of the fittings isn't quite as deeply impressive as it is in a rival Audi A3. Uh, the air vents, for example, don't feel to the touch as great as they look to the eye. And if you happen to have forked out over 30,000 pounds for an upper spec version of this car, uh, the rather flimsy uh, steering column stalks it shares with the Mercedes Sprinter van may not be quite the kind of thing you'll be expecting. Um, overall though, the delivered ambiance is without doubt a highly premium one and that's especially in this top AMG line spec model with its Artico sports leather seats, aluminium pedals and red stitched Dynamica suede style trim. Uh, the shiny piano black finish that decorates the centre stack looks nice too. Well it will do until it inevitably becomes decorated with sticky fingerprints and if you have the 64 colour ambient lighting package you'll be able to play with cabin illumination to your heart's content. Now you can add these slightly awkward slabs of longitudinal grained aluminium to the doors too. Uh, we're not quite so sure we would though. What else? Um, well, getting comfortable on the supportive seats is easy, thanks to plenty of seat and wheel adjustment. It is a pity though that uh, you don't get lumbar adjustment as standard, that's only included as part of the electric seat option. And the taller, squarer windows bring a vast improvement in all-round manoeuvring visibility in comparison to the previous model, and that's something embellished by the standard inclusion of a rear view camera across the range. Even cabin storage is beautifully done. Uh, the butterfly lidded box between the seats for example or this compartment at the bottom of the center stack with its twin cup holders storage cubby and lovely concertinaing top now both these stowage areas have usb ports or what look like usb ports uh, they can only be used if your lead has a usb c connector uh, which uh, fortunately mercedes does seem to supply an adapter for as standard uh, there's uh, also a reasonably sized glove box door pockets with recesses for bottles and an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Time to take a seat in the back. Now, at this point, you might be reminded just how much bigger the A-Class has become throughout the lifetime of this model line. Back in 97, the original W168 series design measured in with an overall length of just 3.6 meters. Today, this W177 series car is uh, well over 4.5 meters long. And in comparison with the third generation W176 series predecessor, it features an extra 30 millimeters of wheelbase that you'd think might make quite a difference for rear seat folk. And by and large, that is the case. A uh, six-footer might still struggle a bit to sit behind another adult of similar height, but overall, there's significantly more room for knees and legs than there was before. Uh, we wouldn't, though, put too much store in Mercedes' claim that this is a five-seater. That's a statement that seems to be rather at odds with the way that the cabin back here has been styled very much to suggest accommodation for two. I mean, three children will probably be fine, though. Uh, you would certainly need to be of school age to feel uh, in any way comfortable with your feet splayed around the center transmission tunnel, which does seem rather prominently high for what is, after all, a front-wheel drive car. 
as in the front, perceived quality looks brilliant, but on closer inspection, it isn't always what it could be. Uh, take the door cards, for example. On this top model, they get these lovely red stitched Dynamica panels, but if you slide your hand down to the door bin edging, the finishing of the flimsy plastic feels very different. Maybe that's unfair. I mean, Mercedes has, after all, tried hard here with smart little touches like these twin turbine style vents, and on this AMG line variant, these smart pronounced thigh bolsters for the seats. Uh, there's a pull-out centre compartment with storage and twin USB points, plus useful seat back nets. And if you're prepared to pay extra for it, this smartly stitched centre armrest, complete with extra pop-out cup holders. And the boot, well, at 370 litres in size, it's 29 litres bigger than the trunk of the previous model. And thanks to the two section rear lights, the loading aperture is 200 mils wider than before, and the luggage compartment floor is 115 millimetres longer. Apparently, six carry on suitcases will now fit in here. Unfortunately, there's no adjustable height boot floor on offer, nor do you get any sort of spare wheel, although that does at least free up a bit of extra space beneath the boot floor. Uh, twin Bag hooks are provided, but there's no 12 volt socket here. What else? Uh, well, if you need space for longer items, but you still need to carry rear seated passengers, then the 40-20-40 split of this rear backrest will be a boon. Fold down the seats completely and uh, 1,210 litres of total capacity can be freed up. Diesel models lose 10 litres from the capacity figures we quoted, but either way, you should find the luggage capacity on offer here uh, very competitive by class standards. As before, most A-Class variants will be sold in the 23 to 30,000 pound bracket. Uh, there's a single five door body style and three levels of trim, SE, Sport and AMG line, with an emphasis on the latter two spec levels further up the range. Uh, the base A180, 1.3 litre, 136 HP petrol model, that's your cheapest way into A-Class motoring. But if you can afford to stretch up to and beyond the 25,000 pound price point, then your options widen. That kind of money uh, will get you either the more sophisticated engine of the a200, 1.3 litre, 163 HP petrol version we're trying here, or what's usually been the best seller in the A-Class lineup, the A180D, 1.5 litre, 116 HP diesel variant. Uh, as before, a very large proportion of models will be sold with automatic transmission. That's an improved 7G DCT 7-speed unit. Uh, with the auto gearbox is optional, as it is, for example, on the volume A180 and A200 petrol models. It's a £1,600 option. We've got it on this A200 test car. Further up the range, the 7G DCT auto box comes as standard. Uh, for example, on the A250, 2-litre, 2 224 HP petrol derivative that for around £30,000 aims to offer a more exact executive orientated but equally powerful alternative to something like a Golf GTI. The A250, like the other powerful A-Class variants, swaps the cruder torsion beam rear suspension setup of the lesser derivatives for a more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension package. Other A-Class derivatives that you can ask your dealer about include a couple of more powerful diesels, uh, the A200D and the A220D, and the two storming super hatch Mercedes-AMG high-performance petrol models that the Stuttgart brand has developed for this fourth-generation A-Class lineup. One is the A35, which with uh, around 300 HP takes on powerful hot hatches like the Volkswagen Golf R, and the other is the A45, with, which with around 400 HP has been designed to set a new standard for the super hatch segment. Now both the Mercedes AMG models feature standard 4MATIC four four-wheel drive and that is an option on some of the more powerful models further down the range. Our focus here though is on the mainstream part of the A-Class lineup. Uh, if you're thinking about graduating into ownership of this Mercedes from something similar made by a volume manufacturer, then you might well be wondering what the extra cost is these days to own a premium badged compact family hatch rather than a comparably sized and powered mainstream brand Focus or Astro type model. Uh, now the answer to that question depends of course on the volume brand model that you're looking at, but in rough terms, uh, think four to 5,000 pounds if you're considering, say, a comparable Focus or Astra, or about half of that if the car that you were considering as an alternative to this Mercedes was a Volkswagen Golf. 
Of course, relatively few potential A-class buyers will be considering this contender as an alternative to Focus or an Astra or even a Golf. Uh, they'll already have the glossy brochures for models like BMW's 1 Series, Audi's A3 or Volvo's V40 piling up in their entrees. At the launch of this car, Mercedes was very well aware that completely new versions of all three of those key rivals were scheduled for launch in 2019. And as a buyer, you can expect them to be priced very comparably to the kind of sums being asked for this A-Class. Although we'll struggle to match the futuristic sophistication of this Mercedes model's cabin, there are other premium wannabe players in the segment which will cost you a little less. Um, Nissan's Infiniti brand offers the Q30 and Citroen's DS brand offers the DS4, but a typical A-Class buyer will have little interest in either of those. If having considered all of that, you conclude it is an A-Class that you really want, then you're gonna to need to know just how well equipped the company's entry of a model really is these days. So let's take a look at that now. And let's start with the base SE trim level, which is only available the least powerful A180 and A180D variants. Even at this point in the range though, you're made to feel reasonably special. Uh, there are 16 inch alloy wheels and inside where the upholster is trimmed in a combination of fabric and Artico man-made leather, the new MBUX entertainment system that's controlled by two seven inch screens one for the instrument cluster and another in the center of the dash navigation is standard too as is a dab radio air conditioning a cruise control with a speed limiter a reversing camera and the multifunction leather stitch steering wheel uh, you also get the dynamic select driving mode system and that allows you to adjust the throttle response the steering feel and on the automatic models the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive the MBUX system doesn't give you smartphone mirroring as standard, but it does include Bluetooth, voice activation, and a live traffic information feature, which is free for the first three years of ownership. Uh, talking of information technology, like most of the premium brands, uh, Mercedes has developed systems which allow you to monitor many aspects of your vehicle from your smartphone. Um, every A-Class model comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect standard services package, and that works via a free app. Now this reminds you when a service is due and it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast accident and breakdown recovery and it will automatically alert the rescue services in the event of an accident. Uh, it can even track the time on your parking meter and send you an alert when it's just about to expire. Enough though with the standard spec, what do you get if, like most potential buyers, you want something a bit nicer than base SE spec can offer? Well, ideally you want to at least stretch to mid-range sport trim, and that's recognizable by larger 17-inch 10-spoke alloy wheels, full LED headlights and LED tail lamps. Inside at this level, there's two-zone thermotronic climate control, dark carbon fiber inlays, and a bit of smart chrome trimming to lift the interior. Ideally, though, you'd want to upgrade your A-Class to the plushest AMG line trim that we have here, and that makes this car feel significantly more special. Now, at this level, the hand of Mercedes Sporting Division has been on the smarter five-spoke 18-inch alloy wheels, the body styling kit, and even the floor mats. Uh, there's also brake calipers with Mercedes-Benz lettering, a sports pedal set, and to lift the interior ambiance, a flat-bottom steering wheel and sports seats trimmed in black Artico leather and Dynamica microfiber. On to options. Now, refreshingly and surprisingly for Mercedes, there aren't many options, or at least there weren't at the launch of this car. Uh, you can pay extra for metallic paint and aluminium trim, but that's about it. Otherwise, the focus is on a series of optional packs, and you are going to have to consider these if you want the desirable full-width double-screen cabin layout that we've got here, which makes the interior of this car seem so futuristic. Your starting point is the executive equipment line. That's a pack that upgrades the central infotainment screen to 10.2 five inches and also adds heated front seats, power folding mirrors, an auto dipping rear view mirror and an active parking assist system with all round parking sensors which will steer you into spaces. Uh, the better alternative to that executive pack, if you can afford a little more and you've avoided entry level trim, is the premium equipment line pack that we've got fitted here. Now this gives you all the executive pack features, but it adds a whole series of others, primarily the 10.25 inch instrument cluster, which uh, completes that full width double screen cabin layout we just mentioned. Other premium pack inclusions run to keyless entry, an upgraded sound system, uh, illuminated door sills, a rear seat armrest, and a 64 color ambient lighting 
lighting package. If you do want more, then the Premium Plus equipment line pack also includes more sophisticated multi-beam LED headlamps, which adapt themselves to road conditions and other motorists, uh, a panoramic glass roof, and memory settings for the powered front seats. Uh, what else? Well, it's disappointing that you have to pay extra for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems, which allow you to replicate your handset's display onto the center dash screen and continue to use all your favorite apps. Uh, that comes as part of the Smartphone Connect package. Now, that also includes wireless phone charging and the digital vehicle key feature, which allows you to unlock the car with your phone. Uh, we'd also be very tempted by the optional Advanced Navigation package. Now, that delivers something that uh, Mercedes calls augmented reality navigation. Now this is effectively a live camera feed of the road ahead overlaid with house numbers, road names, uh, direction arrows and other useful bits of information which will help you to find your way. The pack also includes traffic sign assist which pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them on the dash. On to safety. Uh, Mercedes says that this car was the first of its models to have been developed at its new Technology Center for Vehicle Safety in Sindelfingen, which develops vehicle structures based on findings from research into real accidents. Every single body shell component of this car was developed according to the loads and stresses encountered in real world crashes with respect to material thickness, sheet steel quality and joining technology. And of course, this A-Class includes all the usual camera driven safety kit. As standard, you get Active Brake Assist Autonomous Braking, and that's one of those setups that scans the road ahead as you drive, warns you of potential accident hazards, and is also capable of autonomously braking the car if you don't respond to the warnings, or perhaps you aren't able to. Uh, now, testing's indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose-to-tail accidents and will decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. In addition, Mercedes includes another important camera safety feature, attention assist that monitors your driving reactions to detect drowsiness. Plus the Mercedes Me Connect app we mentioned earlier includes an equal emergency call system which will automatically alert the emergency services to your exact location if the airbags are deployed in an accident. More familiar standard safety stuff includes ABS brakes, which automatically prime themselves in wet weather and which flash the rear lights in emergency stops to warn following motorists. Plus there's an ESP stability control system with acceleration skid control and curved dynamic assist for extra cornering traction. Now, if all that's not enough to keep you out of the hedge, uh, there are also twin front side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, uh, anti-whiplash head restraints, isofix child seat fastenings, a deformable steering column, crash responsive emergency lighting and a pedestrian friendly bonnet. Plus you get tire pressure monitoring and hill start assist, which stops you from rolling backwards on uphill junctions. As for options, uh, well, you can talk to your dealer about the clever pre-safe anticipatory system, which can sense a collision fractions of a second before it happens. And so before impact is able to automatically pre-tension the seat belts, close the windows, and if they're fitted, position the power sunroof and the electric seats to provide for optimum crash survival. Another optional system developed for this model is active emergency stop assist, which can bring the car to a safe controlled stop should you become incapacitated. To suit the mood of the moment, this A-Class can also be ordered with limited autonomous driving capability. That's if you specify the optional Active Distance Assist Distronic system, which is designed to operate on dual carriageway and which works with the Mercedes Active Steering Assist setup. And now the Distronic feature is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control, which uh, automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. Active steering assist keeps you in the center of your designated lane and will, if needed, apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you should be. Um, now, another camera driven feature, which is designed to work with this car's autonomous driving capability, uh, is the clever active lane change assist system. Now, on a dual carriageway with the active distance assist distronic cruise control and the active steering assist operating, uh, then the car can potentially overtake by itself using this feature. Yes, really, you just hold the indicator stalk for a couple of seconds and it will pull out to pass a slower vehicle and then slot itself back into lane as soon as it's safe to do so.
Mercedes says that in typical driving, this fourth generation A-Class uses less fuel and is slightly cleaner than its predecessor. Well, we're gonna have to take their word for that because there's no way of objectively verifying that claim because the official industry measuring process has changed in between model generations from the notoriously unrealistic and EDC driving cycle to this slightly less unrealistic WLTP uh, worldwide harmonized light vehicle testing procedure. If you want the headlines here, the fuel and CO2 readings generated by the volume A180D diesel model are, well, they're pretty much on a par with the figures you'll get from this variant's most direct BMW 116D and Audi A3 1.6 litre TDI rivals. Specifically, we're talking up to 68.9 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 108 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's in the automatic guys that most will want. And you'll find that across the range, the figures you'll get from variants fitted with the 7G DCT automatic box are close to 10% better than you'll get from a manual model. When it comes to the petrol A-Class variants, specifically the 1.3 litre A180 and A200 derivatives, which are our particular focus here, you'll find that this Mercedes can pretty much replicate the returns of directly comparable BMW 118i and 120i models. It can't though quite reach the standards set by equivalent 1 litre and 1.5 litre TFSI versions of the Audi A3. Again, you'll want the specifics, which are that an A180 manual derivative can manage up to 51.4 mpg on the combined cycle, and up to 127 grams per kilometre of CO2, or 54.3 mpg and 119 grams per kilometre in auto form. Now we had expected that the A200 variant that we've been trying here today might do slightly better than that despite its greater power output and that's thanks to the incorporation of cylinder deactivation technology which disables two of the engine's four cylinders in uh, mid to low throttle speeds. As it is, a manual A200 can potentially return 47.1 mpg and 136 grams per kilometre. Those are readings that improve to 53.3 mpg and 123 grams per kilometre if you choose an A200 Auto like the car we've got here. And finally, let's also give you the figures for the auto-only A250 2-litre petrol version. Uh, those are 45.6 miles per gallon and 141 grams per kilometre. All the usual elements of energy saving engineering have been brought into play here. Uh, things like low rolling resistance tyres, brake energy regeneration, electric power steering, an adjustable radiator shutter and intelligent management of engine ancillaries like uh, the alternator, the oil feed and the water pump. As you'd expect, the diesels use the usual AdBlue technology and you get an eco start-stop function that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're waiting at the lights or stuck in traffic. In addition, the 7-speed 7G DCT auto transmission features a sailing function which disconnects engine drive at a cruise for greater efficiency. Even the headlights help, or well, the full LED ones do anyway. They use about 70% less energy than the traditional halogen lamps. And of course, slippery aerodynamics have an impact here too. Uh, A-class aerodynamicist Teddy Voll reckons that this car's 0.25 CD drag coefficient figure is a record for the class. To get anywhere near the quoted official figures on a regular basis, you'll need to make sure that you're regularly using your A-Class in its Dynamic Select Driving Mode System's most frugal eco setting. Now this marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve and it also slightly restricts the output of the seat heating, the heated rear window and the climate control system. Plus, it automatically activates that sailing feature for the automatic gearbox that I was just talking about. Uh, a fuel consumption section on the central MBUX display screen gives you graphical evidence of your uh, success or otherwise in achieving maximum frugality over different recent time periods. And a vehicle screen shows a percentage of gas, well that means throttle, or brake pressure that you're using at any given time. We particularly like the uh, eco display which can show on the instrument binnacle, grading you on acceleration, constant motion, and the amount of fuel-free coasting that you've done. Now this graphic is also incorporated into a larger efficiency briefing layout which also shows driving range and regenerative braking charge. 
what else? Uh, well, residuals will be strong and as good, if not slightly better than those you get from a rival Audi A3 or BMW 1 Series. And we'd normally place a caveat here to the effect that going mad in the options list will put a bit of a dent in expected depreciation. But in this case, it's likely that buyers will be actively seeking models upgraded with those extra larger but pricey twin cabin display screens. Uh, insurance, well, you can insure your car through Mercedes, although most company drivers will have that element included in their lease cost, of course. If you do pay the insurance on the car yourself, you might want to know that the volume A180D diesel variant requires Group 20 insurance. That's three groups higher than a rival Audi A3 1.6 TDI and five groups higher than a competing BMW 116D. There are also grouping differences further up the A-Class range. A top petrol-powered A250, for instance, falls into Group 34, while the directly comparable BMW 125i sits in Group 28. As you'd expect, the Mercedes aftercare package is comprehensive with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, which is notably better than the restricted three-year 60,000-mile deal that the rival Audi brand offers. Uh, this is built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. Ah, oh, now, yes, maintenance. Uh, as usual with the Stuttgart brand's models, there's an Assist Plus dashboard service indicator. Now that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit is due. Uh, and for reference, servicing is usually required every 15,500 miles or once a year, whichever comes first. Fixed price servicing is available across the range and most buyers opt for the Mercedes Service Care Plan, which could cost you as little as about £28 a month uh, based on either a two-service, two-year deal, three years with three services or four years with four services. Whatever package you opt for, it'll cover the cost of all recommended service items like brake fluid, spark plugs, air filters, uh, fuel filters and screen wash. And it's also worth mentioning that the optional Mercedes Me Connect service package includes remote self-diagnostic capability and that enables your A-Class to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. With the A-Class, Mercedes sets out to distill all that's exciting, fresh and modern about its brand into one dynamically compact premium package. And the sales figures suggest that it succeeded. More than any other model in the company's range, this is the one that has most changed the mark's image in recent years. Once, Mercedes was merely known as a purveyor of traditional luxury. Today, its products champion modern luxury. And as any rival brand will tell you, the difference is important. Now that's something you can tangibly feel on acquaintance with this W177 Series A-Class. Head of design Gordon Wagner reckons this Mark IV model is a generation ahead of the competition. And in certain respects, he's right. The cabin, for example, redefines the segment standard. And the MBUX infotainment system is also potentially standard setting. Although, in our view, uh, the speech recognition software still needs development. As for the engineering on offer, well, there's nothing radically different here. Well, for the mainstream models at least. With the Mercedes-AMG hot hatches, it's another story. Um, the important news though is that this Mercedes is at least no longer hobbled by the kind of over-firm ride which blighted its predecessor. And that's despite the brand's decision to limit a properly sophisticated multi-link rear suspension system to top variants that few customers will actually choose. And in summary, well, you're probably aware that most German models require you to spend plenty if you're going to experience all they have to offer, and that's even more the case with this one. Without the fancy larger interior screens, this A-Class lacks a bit of its showroom uniqueness, and that's a selling point that's vital for this car to have in the face of renewed competition from BMW, Audi and Volvo in this segment. Even so, those who can afford the asking prices will find this hatch sporty, self-assured and possessed of a feel-good factor that really does make you feel special if you spec your chosen variant correctly, which is exactly what owning a car of this kind should be all about. <laughs> <laughs>